So this video is all about DNA replication, including some info about the leading and lagging strands and how that is going to go down. How do we go from one chromosome to two? So when DNA replicates is actually back in the cell cycle and it happens in the S phase of interphase. And why the S phase is so important is because interphase comes before cell division. And if you want to go from one cell to two cells, you have to make sure that you duplicate the DNA first, or we replicate the DNA. So in a human being, we actually have 46 chromosomes. And in S phase, every single one is going to replicate or have a copy made. So for every chromosome, you get two. So we would go from having one of every chromosome or 46 total in our somatic cells to two of every chromosome or 92 chromosomes total. So all we're doing is we're taking every single chromosome and we're gonna copy it. So we go from one to two of each. So we're actually gonna get into how this happens but just to note, where is going to be, because it deals with DNA, this occurs in the nucleus. Pretty much everything that deals with DNA occurs in the nucleus because the DNA never leaves the nucleus. Now let's take a closer look at maybe the overview of replication first, and then we'll get into more of the specific details of the leading and the lagging strand. So just a brief overview of DNA replication. I definitely want to make a note that DNA is anti-parallel, meaning that if this strand runs in the three to five direction, then the other strand has to run in the five to three direction. And the first thing that happens in DNA replication is that we have to break all these hydrogen bonds between the nuclear or the nitrogenous bases of either strand. So think this strand has this half of the nitrogenous bases and this strand has the other half and that's why DNA is a double helix or double stranded because it has one, two strands bonded together with these hydrogen bonds. And what is actually going to break those hydrogen bonds is the enzyme helicase, which is gonna come through and break all the bonds between these molecules. So it's actually gonna break them all, separating the strands. So once the strands are separated, another enzyme called DNA polymerase is going to be able to add nucleotides on to these template strands. And the thing about DNA polymerase is that it can only lay nucleotides down in the five to three direction. So if you actually look at these strands, because DNA is anti-parallel for this strand here, the five to three direction of the new strand that we're going to add on to this parental or template strand is going to be in the five to three direction going this way. And for the other strand, it's actually going to go five to three this way in this direction. This is actually going to cause this strand to be the leading strand, which means that we can lay nucleotides down in the same direction as helicase broke the bonds of the original strand. Whereas this strand here, we have to go the opposite direction as the helicase, and that is gonna be called the lagging strand. I do wanna note before I get into how are the leading and lagging strand different, that in the end, these strands are going to have the exact same DNA sequence. It's just how do we get that sequence is going to be different. So our final result will be two identical DNA molecules. As you can see, if you compare these, they are the same. It's just how we get them. And remember, the whole point of this is to take one chromosome or one DNA molecule and create two DNA molecules. So let's start by getting into how the leading strand works. So the leading strand is gonna be this top strand here. 
So you can see that it's going in the three to five direction. And because DNA is anti-parallel, that means that when we lay nucleotides down in the five to three, it's actually going to be heading in this way towards the replication fork or towards our helicase, which is unzipping and breaking the bonds between these nucleotides, unzipping the DNA. So the first thing that has to happen is actually we have to lay down what's called a primer. It's just a little piece of RNA that we need to start this process. So think primer, primary means first. And that is because RNA was likely the first genetic material that ever evolved and DNA came afterwards. So even now, hundreds of million years later, we still have to use a tiny, tiny piece of RNA to start DNA replication. And one of the main differences between DNA and RNA is that RNA does not use T. It uses U instead as a nitrogenous base. So primase is going to come and it's actually going to lay down about five to ten nucleotides. I'm just going to write five um, of RNA just to get this process started. As you can see, I have added instead of a T like we normally would, uh, because this is an RNA primer, which is why I drew it red. We have a U, and we have a U here as well. So A pairs with U on the RNA, and obviously T on the DNA is still going to pair with A. So primase is going to go in the 5 to 3 direction always, which is in this case is headed towards helicase. So we're actually going to lay them down this way, and the primase is going to kind of go off and do something else. And the next enzyme, which is DNA polymerase 3, is going to add DNA nucleotides on to this little starter primer. So we're actually going to be able to replicate the DNA now. We just need a tiny bit of RNA first, and then DNA polymerase is like, oh, cool, I can do my job. And it'll come in and actually lay down DNA nucleotides headed towards helicase. Again, DNA polymerase is going to lay down all of these nucleotides. So it's just going to come up to C and lay down a G, G, C, T, A, A, T, etc. as it heads towards helicase because this, again, is the 5 to 3 direction. That's the only direction we can lay nucleotides down in. So in this case with the leading strand, it actually lays them down headed towards helicase, which is unzipping the DNA and is very, very straightforward. So what'll happen is that after helicase runs out of new DNA to separate, DNA polymerase will be finished and our end result will look like this. So this down here would be our final result. So this is literally the exact same thing as this up here, except for I've just sort of um, moved it down to the bottom of the screen to make it easier to, to see, essentially. So in the end, you're gonna have a double helix, right? So you've got two strands. One was the original parental strand, which you can see here at the top. It's that solid blue line. It's the exact same as this. And here we can see we've got our primer and all of our DNA nucleotides that were laid down. So to end this process, DNA polymerase one is actually going to come in and replace the RNA primer with DNA. That's just because we don't want RNA in our final DNA product because this is not DNA RNA replication, it's just DNA replication. So we kind of use the primer to get this process started up here and then at the end we actually go back and we'll take that primer out because it's no longer useful. So now DNA polymerase, which like DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, primase, they're all going to be anabolic because they add nucleotides in. So it is actually going to put DNA in where that RNA primer once was. So you can see now no more use, only T's, A's, G's, and C's. So actually when it lays it down, it kind of has a small little space that is created here. And the last step of this process is that we actually take this space and we fill it uh, or repair it and 
make it all uniform and nice and neat. And we use DNA ligase to do that. So I went ahead and wrote out um, the third step, sorry. That DNA polymerase one replaced that primer and now ligase is going to come in and it's going to bind that little space together and repair it. So now what we're left with is a nice, neat, uniform DNA strand that we got from this top leading strand. However, this is DNA replication. So right now we've only gotten one strand from the parental strand and we need two, right? Because we need two copies of this original parental chromosome or this original DNA molecule that's being split here. So think DNA is double stranded. So the original parental strand, this is half of the original parental strand and this up here at the top is the other half. We've made one, so now we need to look at this bottom strand and see how we're gonna make the rest of this. How are we going to make that other copy of the DNA? Strand is super similar to the leading strand, except the lacking strands five to three direction is actually going away from helicase. So the first step is still Helicase is going to unzip the DNA, it's gonna separate the strands, so that way we can make the leading and the lacking strands and hopefully get two identical copies of a chromosome at the end of this. So what we can see is that the lagging strand, five to three direction, is away from helicase. However, that is not a problem. We're gonna get around it. And the, the first step, besides unwinding the DNA, is going to be the same as the leading strand, and that is we need to lay down RNA primer first in the five to three direction. So primase is actually gonna come in here, and it's going to start, and it's actually gonna lay nucleotides down in this direction. About five to 10, just like the leading strand, primer is not very long, so it's gonna come in and lay down about five nucleotides of RNA. So because this is RNA, you can see that again, we have a U here instead of a T because RNA primer and all RNA never has T in it, always U. And the five to three direction is actually headed away from the helicase, which is not really the direction we wanna be going, but we don't have a choice because we have to go five to three. So what we're gonna do is we're going to lay down a little strip of DNA here using DNA polymerase three again. So it's gonna lay down some more nucleotides in this space in the five to three direction, which again is away from the replication fork or away from helicase. So now what makes the lagging strand kind of odd is that we create what's called an Okazaki fragment. And an Okazaki fragment is essentially what we have just created. It's a little strip of primer and a little strip of DNA. And instead of being super straightforward, like the leading strand where you have primer DNA and it just creates the DNA all the way down following helicase as it unzips, because we're going in the opposite direction on the lagging strand, we have to continue to make these tiny fragments instead of one long continuous strand with one primer like the leading strand. So what's gonna happen is the next step for the lagging strand is we need to repeat this primer and DNA step we've just done using primase going up here, laying another small primer down and then DNA polymerase three will come in and actually lay down some more DNA until it bumps into this fragment that's already been established. So we're gonna lay another little primer down, which is UGCCG, and we're laying it down in the five to three direction again, which is away from helicase. And then DNA polymerase is gonna fill in these other DNA nucleotides because it's DNA. It's gonna be C-A-A-T-T -T here. And I'm gonna draw a little strip of blue since it is DNA. And DNA polymerase three is the enzyme that is going to actually complete that process. So in the end, what we'll have 
is similar to the leading strand is going to be a double stranded DNA molecule, but instead of one primer to cut out this time, we're actually going to have two primers that we need to cut out. And actually, it's two in this picture, one here and one here. In reality, DNA is millions and millions of base pairs or like nucleotides long. And you would have hundreds of primer to cut out. But for the purpose of this video, I don't have enough space to draw out millions of nucleotides nor the time. So we're gonna cut out all of the primers here using DNA polymerase one again. So it's gonna come up and it's gonna remove those primers. Once all the primers are replaced, DNA ligase is going to come in and fill in the small gaps between the fragments. And in the end, the final result is going to be, you'll have a DNA strand here that is exactly identical to what is being created in the leading strand. It's just, there's more primers to remove because of the fragments, because of the five to three direction going the quote unquote wrong way. So you're probably thinking this seems a little bit overcomplicated. Why don't we just, why don't we just use DNA the whole time? Why do we have a primer? Why do we have to do the Okuzaki fragments instead of just going three to five? And the answer to those questions is that DNA polymerase one and three just do not have the ability to lay nucleotides down in the three to five, nor do the, does DNA polymerase have the ability to start DNA replication without a primer. So here we are with all of these weird, complicated steps, and it's just the nature of the science. It's how it happens. So just know that the rough differences between the leading and lagging strand, but especially what the roles of all of the enzymes are, um, that primase lays the primer down, that DNA polymerase three lays down your initial nucleotides that DNA polymerase one cuts the primer out and replaces it and ligase binds it all together. So that in a nutshell is going to sum up all of DNA replication in the S phase of interphase.